What's good, y'all? Leader here, and this week I made this, a baseball bat made out of skateboards. We're gonna go over the process of how it was made, and we might uh, see if we can hit a home run with it later on. Anyways, enjoy. So what's good, y'all? Uh, this week, as with most projects with skateboards, it starts with ungripping and sanding off all the grit from these boards, which essentially prepares it uh, for bonding to other wood. With the skateboards prepared, I wanted to model this bat after a Sam Bat MC1. Looking at the bat itself, the handle section is approximately 21 inches, while the barrel of the bat is approximately 13 inches, and it has a diameter roughly of two and a half inches. Um, understanding that I want essentially a herringbone pattern of sorts, uh, similar to some of the coffee tampers I've made before in the past, I, I went about making a jig to help me accomplish this glue up. Taking a look through our Ottawa City wood shop scrap bin, uh, I used some 2 before that I found uh, on top of some chipboard, which I created a three and a half inch cradle for the skateboards to be sandwiched in. So once we had the jig ready to prepare the length of the barrel that we needed, approximately 13 inches there, uh, we determined that the skateboards needed to be about two and a half inches wide to fit into this jig. So we went off cutting off strips of two and a half inch wide three and a half inch tall uh, pieces of skateboards. It ended up being about 54 pieces of skateboards that we needed to actually complete the entire length of the barrel. And even then we were a bit short. So that was kind of interesting. To put this all together, uh, every single edge of the skateboards was coated with West Systems epoxy. Uh, it's pretty much the epoxy that I use for all projects. And from there, we once all the glue ups were together, uh, we threw in a 90, in 90 degree wedge and clamped it all together and said sayonara sucker until the next day. While that was left to cure, it was time to create the handle for this bad boy. For that, I used torrified maple and cut a handle to the approximate shape of the sand bat. Now for the technical aspects of turning, the few tools we needed for this build were namely a roughing gouge, a parting tool, a Jacob's chuck, and a four jaw chuck. Those were sort of the specialty items that we essentially used and uh, we'll kind of discuss how they're used throughout this particular build. And so first things first, we had to round out this, the, the handle to a cylinder. And to do this, I pretty much used the rough and gouge all the way along the bat and kept going deeper and deeper with the cuts. Uh, of course, resting it on the rest there up until the bat was turned into a cylinder. Once it was a cylinder, I would then use calipers to record, you know, the quintessential components of the handle. Essentially the butt of the handle, you know, where your hands go on the handle is approximately one inch. And so I'd measure that out and mark the soon to be whereabouts on the rounded cylinder maple at that point. From there, I'd use the parting tool to get closer and closer uh, to these particular measurements, but while also using the rough and gouge to get to the diameter of the bat that was essentially desired throughout. It's pretty much a really iterative process, and that's essentially the name of the game when it comes to lathe. But honestly, it's kind of meditative at times. Uh, it's pretty zen and it's beautiful, like most of woodworking, right? Oh yeah, so one big thing, you've probably noticed now that I'm a sweaty mess, rocking both earmuffs, full face shield, and a respirator. But honestly, it's all so damn important. But back to handle turning. Uh, once I've gone through that particular iterative process of using the parting tool, then back to the rough engage to get my approximate uh, diameters throughout, throughout the handle of the bat, uh, I'm then able to go and turn the tenon that then needs to be essentially inserted into the bat. I knew I wanted this tenon to be about one inch uh, in width, so essentially with the same iterative process where I literally go and use the parting tool on one side of the tenon and then switch over to the next side of the tenon, I get it to down to approximately one inch and then use the, the roughing gouge again in that interior section of the tenon to take that all down to about one inch as well. So with the handle turned, we essentially turn back to this cycled blob of skateboards and epoxy, which will you know, hopefully become our soon-to-be baseball bat barrel. The, the barrel itself is cleaned off initially on all four sides and brought down to a square uh, on both edge ends. With that, uh, we're able to essentially throw it into a four-jaw chuck, which, is, which will keep it tight to the lathe. On the other end, we use the Jacob's chuck and a small drill bit to insert, to create a hole at the very end of the, uh, of the barrel itself. With that, we're essentially able to just, you know, ensure that we can keep the tail stop at the end and it has a nice firm spot to hold uh, the barrel to. 
And from there, we very, very carefully shape the blob into a cylinder. <laughs> so with the 50 or so pieces of skateboards uh, attached together, it was essentially 460 some odd glue joints all throughout this barrel. So you really do have to be quite careful about turn, run, turning the cylinder. Luckily with some finessing, we were able to ensure that it became a cylinder. And by that particular time, it was time to cut out the mortise of this barrel. And to do that, uh, with the Jacob's chuck, we replaced the small drill bit with a one inch bit. And from there, we start cutting into the, the end of the barrel of that. And it's a two inch depth so that our tenon can fit in there. Next, it's the moment of truth. And thankfully, the mortise and tenon fit well. So after that, we get a little bit more epoxy and glue the two of them together. The next day, we were able to throw the bat back on the lathe in its entirety. We first had to drill a little hole at the end of the uh, barrel just to ensure that it fit in with the tail stop well. And from there, we were able to finesse both ends and then sand the whole thing down. I'm kind of lazy with my sanding, so I start off with 60 grit and then I hit it with 120. Knowing that it's going to have a ball pitched at it, it could just build, break into a billion pieces. So, you know, let's take our chances with 120. After the sanding, uh, we throw a few coats of lacquer on there and voila, it's essentially done here on this lathe. And the last part is, of course, cutting off the sacrificial end and literally we have our baseball bat. Uh, now there really is only one question left. Do you think this is going to hit a home run? Uh, the question should be, will it hit a home run and survive? It's very nice. Tree just don't want it as a wall hanging. <laughs> Yep, I think it will hit a moment. Here we go.